Hello! In this video, I will test the Volvo 940 speedometer and repair one that doesn't work. But first, let's see how it works. Here I have a differential mechanism from the rear axle. On the right side, you can see this metal ring with slots. This cover here holds a sensor that is placed directly over the ring. When the car is in motion, the ring turns with the axle and an electric coil inside the sensor is picking up changes in magnetic field, producing an electric pulse. The higher the speed of rotation of the slotted ring, the higher frequency of this generated pulse. The sensor sends the pulse to the speedometer electronics and it is translated into the movement of the needle on the speed gauge. When the speedometer shows zero, and at the same time ABS warning light is on, then it is the sensor malfunction, or most likely the electric harness coming from the sensor. This sensor is providing signal not only to the speedometer, but also to the ABS computer. When the speedometer shows zero, or the needle is jumping all over the gauge, or indicating speed when the car is stationary, then it is probably the gauge electronics and most likely leaky capacitors of the gauge. We can test the speedometer by powering it with 12 volts and providing signal from a sine wave generator. I use for this purpose this chip generator. Jumper at 100 to 3000 Hz range. This one at sine wave output. Ground and pulse cables. When everything is hooked up, we can move the needle applying different frequencies from the generator. Since there is no display on the generator, I use this small oscilloscope to monitor applied frequencies. We can read frequencies on multimeter equipped with this function. 1 kHz gives 150 km per hour on the gauge. About 665 hertz, we read 100 km per hour. Here you have estimated frequencies related to the speed in kilometers per hour and miles per hour. Use it at your own risk. I will not pay your speeding tickets. This was done based on factory scaled speedometer from Volvo 940 93 model. I do it because I need to fix two speedometers from 91-year models. 91-92 gauge is different from 93-94. It will not fit. But both gauges use the same speed sensor and the same ring. Generated frequencies correspond to the same speed. So after repair of my 91 gauges, I will test and compare them to 93-94. I have full box of those gauges. How to connect them for the test? Here we have the whole instrument cluster. To test the speedometer, we must make four connections. D1 and D2 will receive signal from the generator. About 3-4 volts up to 1.5 kHz. D4 positive from 12 volts power source and A2 will be our ground. I don't test speedometer separately, since there is a resistor between the pulse and the ground. I have several Volvos in parts in my garage, so I use original connectors from spare harnesses. Connector D, contact 1, 2 and 4. Connector A, only contact number 2 will be used. D4 and A2 will supply power. D1 and D2 sine wave from the generator. The connectors are the same for 91 to 94, but speedometers have different connections. Here I have instrument cluster from two different periods. 93, 94 at the top, and 9192 at the bottom. 
You can tell them apart by this knob for clock setting. 9192 used two small buttons next to a fog light switch. Connectors are the same, but speedometers are connected in a different ways to the cluster. 9394 has one connector you can see on the top right hand corner. 9192 gets electrical contact via five small screws touching copper prints on the foil. You can't swap the whole cluster between those years since fuel gauge works differently. So I must fix the old ones. To remove the gauge, we must first remove the front panel by removing screws along the frame. Plus those two holding the bottom. Now it is wise to put on gloves to prevent leaving oily finger prints on this matte surface. In case you do, Wipe it with isopropyl alcohol. Crack it open and separate the two. Now undo those five screws and those three holding the gauge. Keep them separate. They are different. No screws. The speedo can be removed. Now I have to separate electronics from the mechanical part. To do this, the needle must be removed. Two blue wires detached. And I have to undo those two screws and those two holding the step motor. It is easy to remove screws and the solder wires, but the needle removal needs to be done right. After repair, it must be attached precisely at the right position on the shaft. Otherwise, the speed reading will be skewed up or down. I turn the needle to the maximum point it allows me to be turned to, and I register this position. The needle points to the K in kilometers per hour. After repairing, it must stop at the same point. I am gently lifting the needle without removing it. It moved up, but still on the shaft, and didn't move sideways on the shaft. I lift the needle at the end and carry it over the stopping peg. Be careful, the peg is brittle. Here we have the lowest point for the needle, and at this point it will be pressed on later. Now I can remove the needle. The solder two wires from the oil change remind mechanism. Two screws and the motor screws. and it comes apart. Let's examine the board. Capacitor slicked electrolyte. It is all over the place, shorting chips contacts and eating up the copper from the board. The capacitors must be removed and the board cleaned. Fingers crossed the chips are not fried. Chances are that even after cleaning we will not be able to restore functionality of this gauge. Another option is a dealership, but I will not even dare to ask how much it costs. Capacitors cost pennies, and on top of it satisfaction from successful repair will be worth the effort. 
but be prepared to spend time and apply a lot of patience here. Dry glue holding capacitors clipped. I hold the motor on a cap to prevent it hanging by the strip. Determining the soldering points and removing capacitors. This one leaked, no question about it. This one didn't, but I will replace it anyway since they are prone to leak with time. It doesn't look promising. This one leaked too. I replaced them with same value capacitors, could be with higher voltage. At the end of this video I provide capacitors values for this board. This is what I will use for cleanup. There is no magic solution, the spill is hard to remove. I use this dental brush to clean between chip contacts. Apply cleaning solution and patience. Scrub, repeat. Different cleaning tools. Careful with sharp tools. Looks better, but far from perfect. Pay attention to the capacitor polarization. Five new capacitors in. Soldering. The board is double-sided, so check if the solder holds on both sides. The one at the top of the screen got too much solder, but it is due to the fact that the soldering point on the other side detached from the board. I will leave it like that. Now I will prepare soldering points for the blue wires. Soldering wick does the trick. Ready. I will clean it with alcohol. Yes, yes, I see it. A tiny piece stuck to the board. It will be removed when brushing the whole board after removing it from the stand. I make sure no shorts are done on the board. And here you have the soldering point that lost its print. Screws in. I don't solder the blue wires yet. I will do it after successful test. The needle? I know there will be no Oscar. I'm off frame. It goes first at the lowest point. Then it is carried over the peg and checked if the max is at the K, then pressed on the shaft. To the cluster it goes. For now I will contact the five screws only. They will hold the gauge for the test at the same time. Connectors on. Power on. It works. Over 998 Hz at 150 km per hour.
over 660 Hz at 100. Good enough for me. There is always plus minus tolerance. One done, one to go. Now the original speedometer will go back on its place. This one, temporary, died as well. The cluster frame has two slots on both sides. Inserting screwdriver and pressing the spring, pull the frame. Remove the frame. Those are the springs holding the frame. Two clips out. And I must remove those two screws on both sides and the screws holding springs. Only with turbo-equipped cars we must remove this panel to get access to the turbo gauge hose. Bottom part. Turn 90 degrees and release. The panel is out. This cover must go as well. And here you have it. The hose disconnected. Now the cluster can be removed. Do not worry, you cannot mistake one with another. All are different. Turbo clusters have rubber hose attached to it. Just removed speedometer had a different problem. Here we have fried resistor and overheated board. It is not always capacitor's fault. Here you have capacitor's value, if you need it. Good luck with your repair. Till next time.